Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I want to do a full face of products I never reach for. So I saw this video from a few different YouTubers. I think uh, Samantha Ravendahl and Kathleen Lights did it. Yeah, I don't know who started it, but I can try and find something and link it down below. But I thought this would be a fun video because I have so much makeup that I'm not using and I don't even know if I like it so it could help me see also if there's things that don't work for me I can declutter them give them to friends and family so that's what I want to do today and I actually have enough products to do my full face so right now all I put on um, was my coconut spray from Sephora um, and my lip balm so yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I never reach for is this. This is the Tatcha The Pearl, I always forget what it's called, Under Light and Eye Treatment. So I think this was in my first haul. Um, and since then, I haven't really been using it, which is a shame because it was like $60. So what this is, is um, it has a tint, so it looks like this, but it's not a concealer. It's, well, it does help to, like for discoloration or anything, it helps to even it out, but you're supposed to put it on like before concealer, and it has like property, like skincare ingredients. I talked more about it in some of my other videos, but I'm still, I think I even mentioned in another video that I'm not using this enough and I haven't even touched it since then so I thought I should use it today and I'm going to be putting this product in my um, everyday makeup drawer so that I get more use out of it because I'm worried that it might expire before I even get to it because there is so much product in this also. You really need like a tiny amount. so. I'm going to start with this. Um, I just used my finger, which I know is not that sanitary, but anything else will get too much product at a time, so I really just take this much. It even said on the package, take a rice grain amount, so yeah. And then I just start from my, um, from my inner corner. I pat it on. And I'll do it on the other side. And then you're supposed to swipe to like disperse the pigments, I guess. And then you just pat the rest in. So that's what it looks like when it's blended in. If I can get a better lighting situation here. I don't know if that's any better, but... Yeah, I mean, it does work. It just for whatever reason, I'm not using it. I think because it's adding an extra step to my routine, which is already, like, pretty basic. So, it's a lot for me to have to add something more. But, yeah. And I actually, I don't think I've ever used this under makeup. So, we'll see today how that actually works. So it did, you know, even out any discoloration I had, which I don't really have um, dark circles, but I do get like darkness right here. So yeah, it doesn't feel like too sticky or anything. So there's that. So the next products I have are by The Ordinary. So I have the, what is this called? The High Spreadability Fluid Primer. I think I used this in another video, in a first impressions maybe, but I'm not, I still, I'm not reaching for it. Um, but it's not really that I don't 
like the product it's because i'm trying to use up what i have so you know i normally go in with um my coconut skin smoothie primer and it's better for dry skin to have something moisturizing under your makeup and i've been mixing it with this sample well, like travel size of the glam glow glow starter this is almost empty so i'm just trying to get rid of it and these two products are actually so similar but this one smells like more sweet i guess and it has like a bit more like a visible shimmer in it but the textures are almost the same so they mix really well but i'm not i'm not going to purchase the full size of this because it's really expensive and i don't think i need it but anyway that's a side story <laughs> as to why i never use this because this is um it's like one of those silicone-y feeling primers so i guess it's supposed to yeah it's for for pilling pore filling and it just gives you like a smooth surface and i think i mean I don't know if these two should go together because I know The Ordinary has different primers and a different kind of foundation. This is the serum foundation. Looks like this. This has been after I've shaken it very well because if when you don't shake it all the pigment is at the bottom and the top is just like liquid which is yeah kind of weird. So it's a lightweight serum formula. I thought, like, before I knew a lot about makeup, which was pretty recently, um, I thought that serum foundation sounded really good for dry skin, but I feel like it doesn't work because the serum part kind of absorbs into your skin and the pigments, like, don't disperse properly. I don't know. I thought it was just me, but I was watching another video today by Bailey Lane and she was talking about the, her top five and bottom five foundations and she was saying like also for her serum foundations just don't work so I think it's kind of like a dry skin thing so I think I'm gonna give this another shot today if I hate it it's gonna get decluttered because I'm never gonna use it and I think the color is too light for me which it's kind of sad because this is a really affordable product. I think it's like seven dollars, maybe less. Um, so I was hoping I'd really like it, but I don't. But what I wanted to do is use the two together and see if it works out any better. So I'm going to put the primer on. Oh, and another thing about this that I forgot that I don't like is all the product like goops up around the dropper. So yeah, it's one of those things. So I'm just going to put it in my hand actually. So I got about that much. So when you apply like this kind of primer, I just like spread it down because usually they tend to ball up but this one is pretty okay for that it's not doing that on me and I think it did do it the last time I used it so after you apply this it does feel like very soft and like velvety which a lot of primers are you know that's the purpose of a lot of primers but like I said I usually go for a more moisturizing one and also what I wanted to do is so it says on the foundation bottle um, dispense a small amount into the palm or back of your hand smooth on and blend throughout the face so I don't I don't really love putting foundation on with my fingers. It just feels like weird to me. So I do have a foundation brush that is specifically made for serum foundations. If I can find it. Oh, here it is. 
I got it in a box of charm. So it's by Bare Minerals. I guess they have a serum foundation. It looks like this. So you're supposed to put the product in the middle and like dab it on and then buff it. So I'm going to try that. I think I've tried that before with this foundation and I didn't love it. But since I never reached for it, I don't remember. So that's what I'm going to do today. So it says small amount. So I'm just going to put one pump to start. Oh, it's locked. So that's how much came out. And I guess I'm going to dab it on. Well, I'm going to have to swipe it because it's already in the brush. And just swirl it around. Yeah, this... I remember when I bought this, I this is not the shade that I wanted. But um, we don't have an ordinary store where I live. And I was in Toronto and they had one, so I was like, oh, I need that foundation. So I wanted to get the shade darker, but they only had this one. It's, by the way, it's shade 1.0N, very fair. I think the one I wanted was 1.1, so yeah, this is not my shade. Well, first, what I notice is... I do like this foundation a lot better when I use it with the primer because it looks really smooth and I think the last couple of times I used it I didn't like it because it kind of clung to all my dry spots which is still yeah it's kind of happening on my forehead I'll show you once it's blended more you can see all the dryness on my forehead. Sometimes foundations do that to me and then as I wear them they kind of melt into the skin and look better so let's see if that happens but so far yeah I don't like this too much. Yeah on camera I look even more pale. Mm, that's scary but we can fix it with bronzer hopefully. But I do kind of like this brush. It was very soft. So for concealer, I don't have many concealers, but the one that I don't reach for because, well, it's newer and I'm trying to finish up my older one is the Maybelline Age Rewind. So I actually got this product to use in my full face of drugstore makeup video. Um, and since then I used it another time, but I haven't used it again so I'm wanting to use it today it does get really messy so I'm just gonna use this under eye I will use my regular concealer for spot concealing so I'll do that off camera but I don't want to put this on my blemishes because it's a sponge tip and then I don't know won't the bacteria like just stay there <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but I do think I like this. I just haven't used it enough and also since the First time I used this I haven't twisted it up again, and it's still like full of product coming out so Yeah, I think this is like one of those products that goes a long way I'm gonna blend that out with my sponge. I don't know if it didn't mesh well with that uh, Tatcha product or if my under eyes exceptionally dry today but it's really settling into my fine lines if you can see it does blend out really easily though And I like the shade, it does give a lot of brightness under the eye. So I'll keep using it and see if I like it more. I have a few blemishes that I want to spot conceal. So I'll do that off camera because I'm using the Kat Von D 
concealer that I use in every video. So I'm trying to use it up. So I also put powder under my eye. I only have one loose powder in my collection. So it's always, whenever I have powder on, it's the Aveda Mineral Loose Powder in translucent. So I'm going to do my eyes next. And for that, I have this palette here. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette. So this was from Holiday, not this year, but well, not the one that just passed, but the one before. And I definitely never reached for this because look, I haven't even used it once. <laughs> so it still has like the plastic. So I'll throw that away. And the brush is still in the plastic. And the stickers on the mirror. It looks like this. It's really pretty. But I don't know why I just never felt inspired to use it. Well, I guess it's because one thing I haven't mentioned on my channel yet is I kind of have like a monthly palette so every month I try and focus on one palette in my collection and I'm starting with like the oldest ones and I just haven't gotten around to this one because yeah some months well specifically before I started my YouTube channel I wasn't even wearing eyeshadow so yeah it's been a slow process to do it that way but it's a way for me to use the makeup I already have. But anyways, that's why I've never used this yet. Even though I got it more than a year ago. But yeah, it is really nice when I look at it. And I really like... I find this color is actually like trending now. And I think when this palette launched, it was kind of like, why is that color in there? But now like... People are putting this kind of color on the inner corner. So I might try that today. Um, I'm not sure. But I think first what I'll do is... Should I put eye primer? No, I'm not going to put primer on because I already put my powder. And sometimes it makes my primer like a weird texture. So I'm just going to go in with the eyeshadow. I'll set my eye with this color, um, it's called Unity, this one here. It's a bit darker than what I normally use for that, but yeah, I want to stick to using this palette today. So I'm going to go in with my regular brush that I use for this. It is a good base color because it has like, it's more like on the yellow side, so it cancels out like any discoloration you have. So it looks like this. I mean, it's a very light shade, so you can't really see, but I like it so far. Then for my, hmm, for my transition shade, there actually isn't really, well, what I would normally use as a transition shade because I would normally use a like a mid-tone brown but the closest things I would use in this palette would be this like color Eden or this color here Lure so what direction do I want to go in? Yeah, I think I'm going to use the color Lore, this one here. It's kind of like a, it's kind of a brown, but it has like some purple in it, I think. So I'm going to use the brush that came in the palette. I normally like these brushes. Yeah, it's pretty powdery as normal for Anastasia shadows. Ooh, I'm very pigmented. I really tapped very gently and I tapped off the excess and it's still like 
really visible, which is good. That was really easy to blend. So I'm just kind of bringing that color out towards the end of my eyebrow. What I found from doing my makeup much more often now that I have a YouTube channel is it's a lot more flattering for my eye to make my makeup go up this way because otherwise it's it's like, I don't know, my eye is too round on the end. <laughs> so if I don't do that, it kind of like, it's weird. And you can't really see my transition color because my eyes are deep set. So yeah, that's why I do that. So I like that color too so far. Maybe a bit more on this side. Okay, that's enough of that. So in my crease, I mean, I guess I have to go in with this shade, parallel to the brown, because everything else is a shimmer, and the other matte in this palette is this one, Saturn, but that's not going to go with the shade I just put down, so yeah. Maybe this is why I don't reach for this palette. It's very hard for me as someone who's not a makeup artist um, to like look at these colors and know how to put them together. It just looks like they're kind of random. So yeah. But yeah, I'll use that parallel shade very lightly for now with my crease brush that I like to use. So I'm just using that really lightly, directly in the crease, like so. So I'm guessing it is a buildable shadow, because it looks really dark in the pan, but it's not applying too dark. But I'm also tapping really gently, because I know Anastasia shadows are very pigmented, and I don't want to put down too much color and then not be able to blend it out. I do want to use the sphere color on my inner corner. So I'm wondering if I should stop there because if I get too crazy it might look weird. But I also really want to use this color, Pyramid. It's like a bronzy gold. I could put that on the middle to outer lid and then put sphere on the inner corner yeah I'm gonna try it I don't know it might look crazy but I guess we'll find out together yeah I'm gonna use my finger to put that color down just to see how it feels yeah it's going on good with the finger it's very smooth like it almost feels like a cream shadow. I don't know if you can see in the pan how like smooth it is. Yeah. If I wanted like this to be more extreme, I could use um, my Fix Plus, but I think for this look, I want it to be kind of softer. So I'm going to go in with Sphere now. I'm going to use the brush that came in the palette. This might not work. Oh, it's very powdery. I'm scared. It's kind of blending away. Like when I pack it on, it's pigmented, but if I try and blend it, it's it kind of disappears. Yeah, it's way better when you pack it on. I think I like it though. I mean, it, it's doing what I had in mind. Not bad. I kind of blended away the other shade. But 
but it's okay. Maybe I should add more. I'm going to use this Aveda brush to pack more of the shade Pyramid. Yeah, these shades don't really go on with the brush very well, though. Well, no, it's kind of working. And then I want to go back in with this brush to blend on top. I guess I'll put more of that lure shade, the transition shade. Now I'm going to dust away my powder. I do have some glitter fallout on my cheeks and I think I've brushed away <laughs> some of the foundation. <laughs> yeah. I like the eyeshadow though. Maybe if I zoom in you can actually see it. Yeah, there's a better look. Yeah, see the glitter here? Uh, I'm gonna do my lower lash line. Let's see if I can keep the camera like this. Sometimes when I'm zoomed in it gets all blurry so I'll have to keep an eye on that. I think for the lower lid I just want to use um, the two transition shades I used, so I'll go back in with Lure, this shade here, can focus, this one, and the brown parallel. And I'm going to use my favorite lower lash line brush. So I'm going in with Lure first. And I'm just going to put some of Parallel on, really on just the outer portion. And I think I want to put some of Sphere here as well, just to open up the eye. So I'll use my MAC 219 brush for that. And I just want to blend that all together. But not too much because I'll dust away sphere. I kind of really like these colors together. I think I just want to put some of Unity, the first shade I used, back on my brow bone to give it some highlight. I'm going to use this kind of brush. This is from Crown, I think. Yeah, it's a crown brush, but it doesn't have a number or anything. So that was my first time using this palette. I do like these colors together. Um, but yeah, the yellow, if you blend it too much, it's just gonna disappear off your eye, so. I also took out these two eyeliners because I never use eyeliner. And I'm actually going to add these to my project pan that's coming up, so stay tuned for that if you're interested in panning. And if you don't know what panning is, it's just using up makeup, basically. So you can watch that video for more information. But yeah, so I have a black one. It's a Marc Jacobs Blacker. Um, I think this was a birthday gift one year. I'm hoping it's not dried out. Oh, yeah, it kind of is. It kind of went on dry. And I know these these Marc Jacobs liners are actually, are usually really creamy. So that might already be done. Um, and then this one is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in Lucky. And this might actually be good for this look. So it looks like this. It's like a copper, shimmery copper shade. I think this would be nice on my waterline actually. So I'm going to do that probably off camera because I don't think you'll be able to see me anyway. So I just added some of that Lucky eyeliner. 
I think I like it. Kind of ties in the shade on my lid, but a bit darker. So for bronzer, oh, see me back out. For bronzer, which is probably going to remove all the foundation I have on. Um, yeah, it's still not looking great. I think this one isn't good for dry skin. Let me know if you've tried the serum foundation from The Ordinary or if you tried the other one. I think they have another one. Because um, I'm really trying to like this brand because it's so affordable. <laughs> I do like the primer though. And I've actually used quite a lot apparently. So I don't know if I'm using too much or if there's just like not enough in this bottle. Because I've only used this like two or three times. But anyway. I think it's just the... Yeah, the foundation is not looking good. And I'm looking quite ghostly. So let's add some bronzer. <laughs> so the bronzer I have that I never reach for is my Marc Jacobs. Omega Bronzer in Tantastic. This was a limited edition release for summer, like two years ago, I think. But I, everyone loved it so much that they brought it back. I think it's permanent now. I'll have to double check. It might be out of stock because it was often out of stock. But when it was a VIB sale, I picked this up because everyone was raving about it. And just look at this packaging. This is like a bigger mirror than I have in front of me. Um, and this is the shade here. So very fair skin friendly. It's It kind of looks like my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. If you can see. Ooh, I'll try to show you side by side. I guess it has a bit like a tiny bit more of a red undertone um but this was supposed to smell like coconuts like the butter bronzer but i think it doesn't last very long like it just smells like that when you first open it whereas the butter bronzer still smells like extremely fragrancy <laughs> this doesn't really smell like anything anymore and i've used it like twice so yeah as you can see like there's still the ridges on the powder like i barely touch this unfortunately it's another very expensive product that i never use so i think i'm going to go in with my tarte brush for this because i want to apply a lot of bronzer to hide the fact that this is not the right shade of foundation for me so i'm just gonna sweep it i guess Oh, maybe not. It's quite powdery, if you can see. Whoa! Okay, yeah. So, off the bat, there's a lot more pigment to this than the butter bronzer. The butter bronzer, I feel like I have to, like, swirl, like, dig into the powder for anything to come off. But, yeah, this one, not so much. Yeah, it's definitely a more red undertone, which I don't mind. It kind of has like a true like sun effect, which I guess is the point because it's called Omega Tantastic Bronzer Coconut Perfect Tan. Okay. Maybe I should bring this on vacation. Not that I'll get a tan. I never do. I do like this a lot. I think I just never reach for it because it's put away in my um, my makeup drawers. Which, by the way, if you guys ever want to see my makeup collection, I can show you that. It's not how I want it to be. But, oh. I have to go to Ikea and get one of those, like, Alex drawers, now that I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the ones that all the 
beauty gurus have but I just think it would be a lot more practical than what I have now which is a mess but yeah I could still show you guys what products I have in my collection I think I like this a lot okay yeah so that gave some color back to my face and for blush I picked out the Rock Tour blush from Benefit. I think this is a mini size. So it looks like this. I don't know why I never reach for it. Because this is like the kind of blush color that I really like. Like a more neutral color. Like it's not too pink. But it's not too like brown. It's like in the middle. I'm going to use the brush I always use for blush. And if I remember correctly, this is pretty pigmented, so I'm just going to go lightly. I think there's like a bit of shimmer in this blush, because it looks quite glowy. Yeah, this redness here is where all the foundation was rubbed off. So it's definitely not long wearing, in case you were wondering. Yes, I do like this a lot. Yeah, it has a nice sheen to it too. For highlight, I have this Artist Couture Diamond Glow Powder in Illuminati. And I think the reason I never reach for this is because it's a loose powder highlight, which scares me. <laughs> um, I just feel like I'm going to make a huge mess with this. So, like, it has a sifter. Like that. And there's so much product, like, already on the top here. So I think I'm just going to take my, I mean, what kind of brush do you even use with this? I'm scared. I'm going to try it with this. This is a Luxie 522 tapered highlighter brush. Here we go. Oh dear. That's gold. Yeah, this is a very like glam look highlighter. So not something I would wear on a daily basis. It's nice though. It's a bit too dark for my complexion. Like it's quite gold on me. But I think in the summer this would be really nice. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> I got this in a boxy charm. And I was really excited because I didn't know how else to get this kind of product. Well, this brand. I think it's a YouTuber that made this brand. Yeah, isn't it? I think it's Mac Daddy. That's his name. But um, now they sell this at Sephora. So it's easier to get for a lot of people. So I'm assuming people really like this. I mean, yeah, I do. I'm gonna see if they have like a lighter shade of this. I would really like to try because that's looking really nice. It's not like highlighting my texture at all. Well, to be honest, I don't have a lot of texture in this area. It's more like around my nose, but yeah, it looks really smooth on the skin. Nice. Yeah, I just don't love loose highlighters. They're just so messy and I feel like I'm wasting so much product every time I dip in. It is a bit glittery to note. If you hate glitter on your face, maybe you won't like this. I think it goes well with the eyeshadow though. It's all like gold coppery vibe. See, now when I close this, it's gonna be a disaster. See, I didn't even, like, take any out and that's what happened. How am I going to close this now? Ooh, I think <laughs> I put way too much here. Yeah, that was not a good area to highlight. Because I have a lot of texture between my brows. For mascara, I took out my MAC Oat and Naughty, Oat and Naughty Lash. Um... You know you guys have seen this a lot on my channel because I use it when I do like more glam looks. 
which is only on YouTube really since I never leave my house but um, I never reach for this in my day-to-day -day because it's really extreme like it looks like false lashes when you have it on but for this kind of look I think it's good so I'm going to use it today and I finally figured out this whole contraption so when you open it from the purple side it's like a thick volumizing um, applicator and then I thought this pink side was going to be like a small thin one like for your lower lash line but it's actually the same brush <laughs> I don't know why I didn't know that but you're just taking it out from like a thinner area so the product is getting taken off so that you have like basically an empty brush so you're supposed to use the first part like as your application and then go in with the pink part to lengthen because it like removes the clumps so yeah it actually does work but yeah if you're like me and had no clue what you're supposed to do that's what it's for <laughs> I actually think you can only get this mascara on Mac's website because um, if you didn't know, they do sell MAC at Sephora now, at least on Sephora Canada. But they only have, so there's two colors of this. This one is just like black, yeah. But on the Sephora website, they have blackest, but that's the only one. So if you're wondering where to get this, it's still available on MAC's website. So I'm just gonna apply this off camera. Well, just to show you, this is what it looks like when I apply just the wider brush. And then I'll apply with the, well, it's the same brush, but with less product. So it kind of just like separates your lashes. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it definitely is longer on that side. Can you tell? Yeah, so it actually works really well. Um, this is one of my older mascaras, so it's almost time to get rid of it. But yeah, it's still working good for now. Oh, but also why I don't really use this mascara day to day is because it is such a pain to take off. It's like glued to your eye lashes but the effect is really nice and the last thing I have let's put setting spray first so I took out this one this is the cover effects illuminating setting spray this came in a boxy charm and I've never used it because I'm a bit scared <laughs> Because apparently it's very glittery and you have to shake it like a crazy person for it to not like shoot glitter directly on your face. So it says, um, illuminating setting spray instantly sets your makeup and imparts a subtle glow for an all over radiant appearance. This fast drying alcohol free formula boosts the staying power of your makeup and finishes your look with a perfect lit from within glow. Well, from what I heard, it's not so subtle, so I'm going to shake this really well. Oh yeah, see, it has like those balls inside. That's how you know there's like actual shimmer in it. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh, the mist is so fine. I inhaled it though. Oh, but it's really nice, see? It's so... Yeah. Really different from my MAC Fix Plus, which like drenches you when you, <laughs> you apply it. Is it illuminating? I'm not sure. I just keep looking at this highlighter, so... <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe. 
I don't want to keep putting more because I'm scared, but I really do like the mister on that. That is nice. It didn't smell like anything either. So I'll keep testing that out. Then for lips, I took out a few things. I have so many lip products that I never use. But I took out ones that really like stood out to me as products like, oh yeah, you bought that and never used it hardly ever. The first thing is this um, Bite Beauty Line and Define Lip Primer. So I really like the idea of this product, but I keep forgetting to use it. Especially when I put on like liquid lipsticks that are really drying. I want to put something like this on first. I just have to remember to use it. But it looks like this. It's a clear pencil, basically. MAC has a product like this called Lip Primer. Some, I think it's just called Lip Primer. And they tried to sell that to me last time I bought one of these lipsticks I'll show you. But I was like, oh, I already have that. And it was this, but I never use it. So let's use it today. Um, I don't know if I've noticed a difference using this, but I like the feeling of it. It's basically like a lip balm, but I guess it's supposed to smooth your lips so that when you put a liquid lipstick on, it doesn't like seep in to your lines. So the reason I put that on is because I might use this lip product. This is by MAC. This is the Retro Matte Liquid Lip Color in Burnt Spice. So I remember wanting this for months and then I finally bought it because I had a gift card. So I finally bought it and then I never used it. So this is the kind of thing I would put something like that Bite Beauty primer on before because this is supposedly very drying. Um, but I really like the color and I just wanted to try it. So it looks like that. But I have two other things. These Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suits. So I was really excited to buy these because they're super affordable. I think I got these for like two fifty, Because they were, I think it was two for one that day. Um, but I can only get these in the States because we do have Wet n Wild in Quebec, but we only have like an eyebrow pencil and like, I don't know, really random stuff that no one buys from Wet n Wild. In the States, they have like the full Wet n Wild makeup line. So that's where I got these. But as you can see, this one I haven't even opened. This is the shade Give Me Mocha a nice color and this one is nudist peach hmm. so I'm really not sure what I want to go with maybe I should swatch them so this is Mac burnt spice so it has like one of those doe foot spuds like pointed with the hole in the middle so it takes more product out. Oh dear. That was very liquidy. So that's MAC Burnt Spice. I think I have to mix up that formula. Has this gone bad already? Look what happened. It's all moussey. It still smells okay. So that's Nudist Peach. This one I'll have to actually open. Yeah, these are streaky from what I can tell as I'm swatching. So that one is Gimme Mocha. There was eyeliner there, sorry. I think the peach one is going to go best with this eye look though. So I'm going to do that one, even though that's the one I've used before. I don't remember if I like these. I think I remember them being very drying, so... We'll see. I think I'm going to use a lip liner with this. Yeah, I'm going to use my Aveda lip liner in Foxglove. It's this color here. I really like this lip liner. 
The Aveda lip liners are super creamy. So this is darker than the Wet n Wild, but um, I do want some more definition. Because often peach looks too light on me. Yeah, these go on really streaky. So that's the nudist peach color. It feels good so far, but it hasn't dried down yet, so who knows? I think I need more setting spray. I still have that like dry powdery look from that serum foundation. Yeah, I really prefer my MAC Fix Plus. It just puts like some hydration back into my skin, which I need. I almost forgot about my eyebrows. Yeah, so product I don't reach for are my eyebrow pencils. So I'm gonna go get that. Now we'll be back. So I'm back, so yeah, I had to put the files on my computer because this video is so long. Uh, but don't worry, I'll edit a lot of it out, I think. So I just want to show you, I did put my Anastasia Brow Wiz on. Um, this is what it looks like by itself. So I don't use pencils to like fully define my brows because I don't like that look on me. But yeah, it doesn't look that bad. So I don't know. But I do have to put my Hourglass fiber brow gel on top because some of my hairs are like crazy and not staying down so yeah I'm gonna put that over it but I just want to show you what it looks like this is the shade soft brown and there's with my fiber brow gel so you can see that my hairs do look a lot more volumized with that but yeah that's the finished look um, just to quickly go over everything. Well, I think I really like this primer. I'm going to keep using it um, For days when I feel like I really need to smooth out my skin because normally I have like super visible dry patches Especially around my nose and now I don't see them as much. So I'm thinking it's because of this um, I don't like this foundation unfortunately yeah, it's just not working for my dry skin. It does look better now than it did when I first put it on. But also like half of it is gone because of when I put my bronzer and blush on. So is it worth it? Even though it is cheaper, if it's just going to come off my skin and make me annoyed, I don't think so. So yeah, that's a pass for me, unfortunately. The setting spray... I don't know, did it do, did it illuminate? I'm not sure. I thought this was going to be like extreme illumination, but I don't really know. I guess a bit, but it doesn't have the effect that my MAC Fix Plus has, so yeah, not my favorite. The concealer, now that I've tried it a few times, I do think it settles into my lines. Because they look a bit more visible than they usually do. So yeah, I'm not sure about this one. But I'm going to keep using it. The lip product, I think I really like it. But I will say I think this Bite Primer helped. Because my lips look a lot more smooth than they normally do when I put a liquid lipstick on. And I remember this one being particularly drying, so I do think this really works. So I'm going to keep using it. It's in my everyday makeup drawer to make sure that I get use from it. Um, I really like the face products, the blush. I really like this shade. I really like the highlight too, even though it's a bit too gold for my skin tone. Um, but I like the formula. And what else? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> the eyeshadow palette. Um, well, I really like the look that I got with it. I really like these tones together. And there's so many other shades in here that I want to try. Like, just look at this green shade. It's so nice. And this shade here. Yeah, I'd really like to try those. But the matte, well, at least the sphere shade, which is like 
the make like the shade that your eye is drawn to when you open this palette it does require packing on a lot for it to show up like it does in the pan but yeah it still turned out really well so yeah i like this and i hope to get more use out of it maybe not on camera because i'm afraid like you won't be able to get this and then I'm talking about it and yeah but yeah I am happy with this so I think that's it I'm just gonna keep my hair like this I guess <laughs> it is like what time it's 9 12 p.m. so yeah um, but I hope you like this video and maybe you learned something. Maybe I used a product that you've never tried before or that you have tried a lot of times and you have more of an opinion on it. Let me know down below. But if you liked it, um, leave me a like and subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to see more videos. And I'll see you on my next one. Bye!